All right, guys, how's it going? I'm just going to continue with this exploration in my ASP. Puh. <laughs> what of you to log into, though? The sun just coming round from behind this planet that I found at the end of the last one. It really is superb. Some of these views are just incredible. We've got a few contacts around as well. Thirty thousand credits in this asp. A tough fight though, maybe. Let's find out what he's all about. Probably not the smartest thing to be doing in all honesty, but you know me by now. So I've got his power plant targeted at least, so. It's an easy 30,000. Oh no, it was Federation for this guy. Yeah, so this is one of the reasons why I took weapons, yeah? And shields. Pick up some money when you're in at the, the nicer... You're in looking at the nicer planets. Right, but anyway, I'm going to continue on my journey. I was heading towards Beta Crucis, or B Crux. Which is a very hot blue star. Once again, you need to set the fastest routes. I wish it would remember that. Should only be two jumps, sixty-one point nine three light years. And it's actually going to be three jumps. And maybe this is one of these occasions where having the thirty-four light year jump would have been better. But I can only make it in three jumps. 57 new objects. Well, this is this is my record for finding objects in a system, that's for sure. I don't think there's anything particularly interesting about this star. <laughs> it's a red dwarf. So look at the system map. Right, nice, so we've got a couple of red dwarfs. An awful lot of moons, basically. So there's nothing here that you're really going to get too excited about. Yeah, I'm going to just be quite content with the 57 objects and continue on my way. Right. Very large class B star. Beta Crucis, or B Crux. I'm expecting black holes here. No, instead we've got a bunch of dwarfs and a pretty big looking gas giant. A little roasted rock here. Class M. Pretty large looking Class L, but there's nothing there that I'm really remotely interested in checking out. There's a couple of blues here that I want to pick up, so... Yeah, I'm going to do this. The blue stars are definitely good markers to, you know, to head for. This one looks a little bit whiter. 44 objects. Alright, this will be pretty hot. 
planet. Maybe go check that one out for the rings. We're looking at more dwarfs with rings. Wow, look at the size of the rings on this one. Go and check this one out, maybe. Go check out this little first one just for a view, and then this big class T dwarf. Interesting colour to this one. Uh huh, it hadn't, it hadn't popped up yet. But the rings are quite an interesting colour. A beige colour. Endless sea of ice. Right, I guess this will be the, the dwarf that I'm looking for. Yeah, it's certainly the right colour. And it looks as if it's going to have some pretty spectacular rings on it. Get a real feeling of how empty and lonely space can be. Seems worse with the blue stars for some reason. That eerie glow that they give off. Just about start to see the little moons around it now. It really is such a cool game. It's about six moons now, five moons. Seven. I just wonder how many people will actually appreciate you know, the engine behind the game. You see it all more clearly if you move a little bit off the centre, obviously. Can't quite see these rings, so I wonder if they're gonna just pop in or are they very am I coming to it flat? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty bizarre this is gonna be. <laughs> what does that look like? Maybe I, maybe I better not think too hard about that actually. <laughs> this is quite a set of rings. Little bit dark though. I 
Yeah, that's close enough, I think. Now, we spotted another blue star around here, Lambda Crucius. Quick jump over. You do tend to find that these large blue-white stars have got an awful lot of other bodies around them, especially other stars. An awful lot of dwarfs around them, actually. Look at this. I mean, I thought the rings were big on the other one. Look at the size of the rings on these. Let's continue on our journey. Right, I was heading towards the Colsat. There should be pretty, pretty big red star coming up. Got kind of orange colour to it. There we go, we've got a, a Class K orange giant. A much smaller Class M. Very close by actually, only 815 days. There it is. Right, we're now very close to this coal sack. A few more blues around here. Well, let's head a bit deeper in. Right, now this is where you have to be careful because had I not really been paying attention, I would have found myself unable to refuel. Because this is a Class L. You've got to start watching out for this now, when you, when you get, you know, off the beaten track. I think it's safe to say that there's nothing here I'm really bothered about. I've got plenty of fuel left, obviously, but just, you know, just be careful that you keep it that way. You don't want to end up... I mean, how much of a disaster would it be losing all this data now? This is the first Class A I've been to. During this expedition, at least. 47 objects. Right, now that's going to be a boiling rock. And we've got a bunch of very similar looking gas giants. Nothing here I'm going to bother with, though. And what have we got over here? Red giant? Orange giant? Right, let's head over here. Maybe refuel before I go anywhere, yeah. Class A seem pretty good at refueling it. Yeah, my heat doesn't seem to be going too high. Fuel yeah, I would definitely say that A star there, with that star has been very easy to refuel at. Looks like there's quite an awful, well, an awful lot of activity in this one. Look at these names, all this reloops guy seems to get a, a bit of exploring done as well. Oh, I'm being interdicted by a sidewinder. Got a bit of fright there, actually. Destroyed. 
Alright, so I've got one and a half thousand. Better than nothing. Alright, I'm not going to bother with anything else in this system. I would have to go all the way over here, which I'm not willing to do at 88,000 days. Here we have our orange giant. Pretty odd looking system in all honesty. Right, I think I'm just going to keep on heading in this same direction. Start now to find that you're really struggling to find any of the name stars. Just getting that bit further out now, so anything that I run across is going to be either very luminous or very large. And that's why it's all these procedural names. But there will of course be procedurally generated, you know, blue stars as well. So, I spotted a blue star, or a white, worth jumping in here, that's right ahead of me. Just a double system, you can see the other star in the background. This is a big white star. Continue on though, yeah, that one looks like an interesting one to jump to, so plot it out to there. Looks like we've got five stars here, including this orange giant. Being discovered. I mean, even out this far, there's a lot of stuff being discovered. But people are doing, it's basically people are doing exactly what I'm doing. Having a look at the map, looking for the big things. Or the name stuff. There's a G8 over there, that's going to be my next stop. I mean, to me, this is the best way I do it. I think if you pick a direction, or if you've got like a a final destination in mind, but just have a look in what direction you can go. As long as you're always heading towards that, you know, that final destination. There's an awful lot of these hip, these hipparchos stars. It's almost like you can plot a course by them. I guess these are going to run out though, even, you know, as you get further and further out. A yellow giant, this one. Maybe not even a giant on its way to being a giant, perhaps. Maybe it's just a normal yellow, but it looks pretty big. Yeah. So it's the same type as the sun, except it's much larger, which means it's basically on its way. It's starting, you know, to, it's starting to move towards the giant phase. So as it gets bigger, the surface will start to cool. It'll turn orange, then it'll turn red. We're not exactly sure about how these things work. Apparently, they can, you know, they can move back the way as well. They can get hotter and stuff as they contract. But this is on its way to becoming a red giant. Probably swallow up all that. Yeah, it could do. It could eventually. End up swallowing this asteroid belt. There's not much else to be swallowed. Well, maybe there is. I think I may have hit some kind of bug here. 34 new objects. Yeah, there's a bit of a bug there. Right, E Centauri. B9 and an A4. That's where we're going next. Here's a system full of T-Tauri stars. You need to be very careful here, because you can't actually refuel at them, but they still look like red or orange or even yellow stars. So you've got to be very careful of this. If you're running low on fuel, you would not be able to refuel at this. And it would be game over. As you can see, I'm getting no fuel from it even though it looks like a typical red star. You can tell on the map, it does look like a, it doesn't look like a red star on the map, however. Now, there's been a bit of a dearth of really good systems so far. I've been to plenty of these larger stars, but there's not been an awful lot fantastic out there. And this is another one, I think. Dual star system, the second one is very far away. A B and an A. So I'm going to refuel before I go anywhere now. Fuel 
This glass F's pretty nearby. I should be able to scan it from here. Yep. Right, we're really kind of getting devoid of stuff now. So we've got an orange giant over here. So I think we'll come over to this one. I'm not having a huge amount of luck so far. It's It's been pretty mediocre all around, I would say. And we're at a big K star. Quite an interestingly laid out system at least. This one's pretty close by, this one's pretty far. Again, there's not a huge amount here that I would be interested in. They're all tiny looking balls of rock. I mean, pretty disappointing how few how few water worlds and athlete worlds, you know, even potentials that I've had a look at. I'm not gonna waste time looking through all these, obviously, just hoping to find one because the chances are there aren't any there. You've got to really find a sweet spot, something that you know you feel that there's a very good chance of there being something there. I think class G stars, like our own sun, those are generally like the favourite favourites to find stuff like that. Or certainly K's, maybe the odd F star. But I've got to just be like, you know, just right. Really is like Goldilocks, just right. Then you want. Right, what have we got over here? An A2. Probably worth a visit. Did I see something else over here though? Aha. Uh -huh. That seems worth a visit, so I'm gonna actually plot a route to this, then jump over there. And so three new objects. All stars by the looks of things. These two will be around each other lately. Yeah. Yeah, we'll jump over here like I said I would. Right, now these look interesting. We've got a very blue colour to them, some of these ones. This one especially. And given it as a white star, you'd expect around about three or four AUs out to start seeing stuff like this. I mean, this is very high potential for a water world just by looking at it, yeah? So, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be checking these ones out. Let's just do them all. I'm guessing this one's gonna be at least terraformable. You notice I'm not getting too close because it just slows you down. You don't wanna get caught in the gravity of the planet, obviously. So these are all high metal, but it's the ones after. Sadly, that one can't be terraformed. I had a feeling that that one would be terraformable, but it doesn't look like it. As you can see, these are all very hot, as you would expect. But it's these onward now that there's a real potential in. It's got to be at least terraformable, this one, surely. No. And they're all high metal planets at least, but... Right, so we've got three to go. Still, I still think this one looks very good. Maybe too cold though. It's just another high metal. Yeah, even though this one looks good, the more I look at it, I think... Well, at least this one's terraformable, yeah, the one before it. But... I kinda think this one's gonna be too cold. And it's pretty small as well. It does look like it could be water on it, but... I guess we'll find out in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get close to this one anyway, even if it's not a water world, just to see how, you know, why exactly it's got that sort of blue colour about it. Got a water world! Finally something else! It did look like a water world, yeah. I would have been pretty disappointed if it wasn't, but given the rest of them. I 
It's a real water world as well. There's not much land at all there. Turn off these orbit lines. Get a proper look at it. Yeah, you're not quite Earth. But you're not bad, considering what else I've seen out here. This is a water world in every sense, really. Don't see a bit of land on it. Pretty nice all the same. It's actually a little bit hotter than I thought it would be. A lot of oxygen on it. And it's got carbon water based life. This only leaves these last two. I'm not expecting anything at all out of these two, but I may as well finish this system just for the completion. I mean, this is what the second water world I've found in maybe about how many systems. One of the things that's slightly unrealistic about it is all the core systems that you start off in and around Earth and Lave and stuff like that, Akinar, there are very many Terran worlds or Earth like worlds, and there's a lot of water worlds as well. But once you actually leave that core, you hardly find any. So it's a little bit unrealistic in that way. I would rather there were less Earth-like worlds in the core systems uh, or more out here rather than having an awful lot in and around where the player is going to be playing. It just doesn't seem all that realistic to me. Be a little visit to my water world. Just log out here. And I think I'll probably just sleep here for the night. Yep, I think I'm gonna just sleep here for tonight. It's a shame there's no green around. This will do for now.